So let's talk about this potentially extraordinary moment that we could see soon, when the now disgraced former head of FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, is going to take the stand and testify in his own defense, according to his attorney. Prosecutors have already called some of SBF's top executives, like his ex-girlfriend, Caroline Ellison, who headed FTX's sister hedge fund. Remember here, Sam Bankman-Fried is on trial for all these federal fraud charges related to his former crypto company. He's accused of using money from customers to do things like donate $100 million to political groups and do other things he wasn't supposed to do with that money. He's facing a potential life sentence. He has pleaded not guilty. NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos is joining us now. So if we had talked like maybe two months ago, Danny, and I think we may have actually had this conversation, I think you would have told me no chance or very little chance that SBF's defense team will let him get up and speak here, will let him testify on his own behalf because there are real risks, especially on cross-examination. So what's the benefit here for SBF to try to speak in his own defense from a legal strategic reason? For literally centuries now, the default position for criminal defense attorneys is never, ever, 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 ever let your client take the stand. But in the last several years, that trend seems to have changed. We've seen in high-profile cases uh, defendants taking the stand and taking a chance, because that's really what it is. It is a roll of the dice. You see there Alec Murdoch. You see Elizabeth Holmes, Jussie Smollett. Kyle Rittenhouse is yet another one who took the stand. Mixed results. Alec Murdoch lost his case. So did Elizabeth Holmes. But there's a good argument to be made that their cases may have been hopeless, irrespective of whether they took the stand. That may be the situation with SBF. He's got to try something. This may be that something. So here's a question, Danny, because, you know, SBF, if people remember and, and know this from like our coverage of it, et cetera, he was out there after FTX collapsed talking a lot, talking to members of the media, talking with reporters, talking on like, you know, um, I think it was like a Twitter space or something along those lines. He was like super vocal, even though he was facing these potential charges here. This feels in some ways like it could potentially, and this is speculative, so I just say that. Speculative could potentially, way. though, be, be driven by perhaps SBF's desire to continue talking, maybe. Actually, what I think, I think you're right, and I think what's happening here is that SBF's teams real, realize that there is so much out there that he said to the media uh -huh. that the government can use against yeah. him that now he needs to get on the stand and say, no, 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 when I was saying that, I really meant this. But at its core, his testimony is a bit of a paradox. He has to take the stand and convince the jury that he was ignorant that he basically was mm. clueless when all these things were happening. Despite all of his statements out there and despite all the paper, it is an uphill climb and a risk, but a risk this defense appears willing to take. And just real quick here, we're getting some new details in the last few days of court about some of the money that he donated to some different political groups. How much in the scheme of things, the grand scheme of things, um, does that matter? What's the significance there? Not much. Maybe if he's convicted okay. at sentencing, you can make the argument that, look, I mean, he didn't take the money and do anything extravagant like, say, I don't know, move to an island in the Caribbean. Oops, he did do that. So that may not be as helpful when it comes to sentencing if he's convicted. But in terms of his uh, culpability, it doesn't matter that you use your ill-gotten gains for good or bad. Uh, the, the fact that you, they are ill-gotten is enough for the government. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.